was he with me when I started? And not only is he with me right now, but he'll be an omega. He's already in my tomorrow. He's already in my five years down the road. He's already, hallelujah, he's already in my resurrection. He's already, you're not here, me. I said he's already, he's already done before me. He's already made the path. He's already made a way. God knows the future. And he knows the plans. He told Jeremiah, he said, I know the plans that I have for you. I know the thoughts that I think towards you. I already know. You see, we as, as man and woman, we can take the apple and we can break open the apple and we can see the seed that's inside the apple. But God can look at the seed and see the apple that's inside the seed. <laughs> well, I'm going to let that sink in for a minute because some of you still ponder on that. I said we can see the seed that's inside of that apple. But God can see the apple that's inside of the seed. That means he already knows what's going to happen. He already knows the plan. He already knows the way. You see, we're, we're, we're confined in these mountains and, and down in these hills and hollers. You go out west, we go out of Oklahoma and preach, and you can get out there and you can see for three miles as far as you want to see. They are out nowhere. But here where we live, you can only see about a quarter of a mile most of the time as far as the mountain will let you see because you got to go around the curve to get around the mountain to get to where you're going. I, I know, I come, I come across Pine Mountain tonight. I mean, that thing's a snake all the way across, up and down. And I can only see so far, do a little better when the leaves are off. But when the leaves are on, you can only see as far as that mountain will allow you to see. And sometimes the reason why folks get so discouraged and give up and they just, just try to make things happen for themselves is because they can't see the answer. They can't see the solution to the problem that they're in. But sometimes you got to realize there's mountains and there's hills and there's obstacles and it doesn't mean that your answer isn't there. It only means that you just can't see it. And you've just not gotten to it yet. That means sometimes you got to walk And just because we can't see it in the moment, we think that it's not, not there. But it's been there the whole time. It's been there the whole moment. All those times you cried. All those times you prayed. All those times you just felt like you were all home. God had the answer. But it just involves you get to the other side of the mountain and be able to see it. You know, sometimes I can look at that mountain and it looks big to me. But when I get to the top of it and I look down, I can see the whole view and I can see the whole picture. And not only when I get to the top, when I'm from that bottom, I look and I look at it from my perspective. But when you get to the top of the mountain, you're looking through the eyes of God and you can see exactly how God sees it. And sometimes you just got to take another step and sometimes you got to just dig in and climb on and you got to dig your fingernails in the flesh of a rock and say, I don't care how high it is. I don't care how long it's going to take me to climb it. I know that when I get to the top of this thing, I'm going to see what God had in store. I'm going to see what he had all along because I know that there's an answer when I wait. God has a people. And they're called they that wait. He said, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. We are a people. Somebody said, well, Israel didn't always wait on God. But there in the midst of Israel, God still had a people that would wait. When Israel said, stone Moses, Moses went and prayed. When they tried to kill Elijah, Elijah went and prayed. It didn't matter how things may look and how it may appear to be. God's always had a people that will say, I'll wait on you. David out there hiding in caves. He would write a song and he would say, Lord, as I read to you tonight, he said, I'll wait all the day. I'm not going nowhere, Lord. I, I, can't, I don't have nowhere else to go. I don't have no other direction to turn to. I don't have an alternative. He said, I'll wait here all day on you. I'll wait if I've got to stay out here with my face in the ground, seeking your face. I'll wait as long as it takes. I don't have another option. I don't have another alternative.
Just wait it out. Yeah. Just hold on a little longer. Yeah. And just wait this thing out. Yeah. The most, probably the most, the biggest reason why folks backslide and they just quit and they turn away from God is because they had to wait. Right. And I'm telling you in this thing tonight, there's going to be waiting periods. There's going to be seasons that you just have to wait. I'm probably like most of you. This winter thing is for the birds. <laughs> we've had to, I don't cancel meetings for nothing. I mean, we go. We go for anything. But we've had to cancel meetings because snow. And I hate it. I don't like it. I don't like getting my dress shoes sloppy and messy. I just don't like it. You can ask my wife. I, I'm, a, I'm not a winter guy. And I'm really not a fall guy either. I don't like to watch leaves die. I know she loves the colors of fall and decorate the house and all that pretty orange and brown and red and all that stuff. But I'm a spring and summer guy. I, I want to see them trees come alive. I want to see them. I want to see flowers bloom. And even if I have to sneeze and get cough up pollen, I still want a springtime. And I go into spring and I go into summer. And I'm here to tell you tonight, there are times you're just going to have to wait out this winter season. You're just going to have to duke it out. You're going to have to put your galoshes on, put your tobacco on, put your scarf on, and just press on anyway. And I'll tell you one thing. It may like still March and it may like still April. And a lot of times we still get snow in April. But there will come a day. I said there will come a day. Yeah. 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 
you got to duke it out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but there'll come a day you'll have some corn. Yeah, right. and I, when me and my wife first got married, I'd never gardened. I mean, never done anything like that. We had an apartment. <coughs> had a little bit of land on the side of the apartment. And I had Lord told me, I said, can I plant something out there? I said, go ahead. Plant whatever you want. So Dad brought his tiller up there. We, we, he helped me about to put about two rows out. I said, she likes squash. She likes zucchini. She likes uh, tomatoes. And, and she likes cucumbers and some peppers. And I put some things out like that. And I said, I know she really likes tomatoes. I hate tomatoes. I don't like anything about them. I'll eat, I'll eat ketchup and I'll eat salsa. I'll eat anything that's made out of a tomato, but I just ain't eating a tomato. That's all I eat. You can't put enough salt on it to make it taste good enough. <laughs> ain't nothing to do to a tomato to me. Now, God bless you if you need them. <laughs> sure, you can have it. But I said, I, you know, I was, I was a newlywed. I was going to take care of a woman. I was going to plant some tomatoes. <laughs> so I went up there to that place, and I, how many, how many, how many of them things did I buy? I bought 16. Of those, uh, uh, what were they? They were just the little plants, you know. I bought 16 of them things. And I brought them home, and Daddy said, we're, He's going to help me plant this stuff. And I said, I got 16 plants of tomatoes. He said, What are you trying to prove? He said, What do you need with that much tomatoes? I didn't have any idea that I'd plant that many in the ground. I figured, you know, if you would grow one each plant, and I'd give her some tomatoes that would do through the sun, do through the pot. I didn't know I was going to start a tomato farm, and that I was going to have to feed the on tomatoes. <laughs> but that is because I didn't know. And, and, and to beat it all, even the fact of that, that they said, and, and on some of them, they said, they said lemon, those yellow tomatoes. I said, I'm going to play her some lemons. She likes lemons. And I didn't know they were those yellow tomatoes. I didn't know that. I thought I was going to play her some lemon trees. I thought, so good, but you have to realize it. Even though as crazy as that sounds, and even though it, 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 it's all feet as you think this preacher is, I had good intentions that what I put in the ground would eventually give me what I was looking for. I found out they weren't going to be a lemons, but I found out I was going to have a whole lot of tomatoes. Hallelujah. I had enough tomatoes that rolled off the hill. I mean, they were rolling, I only put out about eight plants, but tomatoes were all over that yard. I mean, it was unreal that there's possums coming up out of that creek back there eating those tomatoes. I mean, I fed the raccoons and the, and the possums. I mean, they fed good off of me. But I'm telling you, it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter even though it's confusing as it might be. And even though you may not have all the answers, just put it in the ground and trust God. Say, I don't know what's going to come out of it. I mean, I don't know what's going to come out of it. It's all said and done. No, I know it's in the ground. enough just to throw it in the ground yeah. and just see what happens. Because trust in God is not just a shot in the dark and just a shoot from the hip and hope it happens. To love God is to trust God. Yeah. And if we say we love Him, there's times, let me tell you, don't ever say to the Lord, Lord, give me patience. Because the only way you obtain patience is to be tested. Amen. And it's to be tried. <laughs> And it's to be put in situations where you got to get tested. I was at the funeral home a couple of weeks ago, just had to sing. I didn't have to go to the burial afterwards. And I got out the final of part of this great men of God's preaching after this. Got up 